So prevention though, never ever work a horse on an empty stomach. Kind of makes sense now that you understand that they don't, they never ever cut off their acid production and that ulcers are caused by the acid splashing around. So um, feeding hay 30 to 60 minutes prior to work is going to fill your horse's stomach up. It's also going to fill the horse's stomach up with saliva and it'll, it'll um, bring the pH up so it won't be as acidic in there. And loosen hay is best because loosen hay naturally itself buffers as well. So if you can feed loosen before you ride, um, and particularly if your horse is um, stabled or yarded and it doesn't have free access to hay or pasture all the time, it's really important. Um, and then providing access to hay immediately after work as well. So don't work your horse and then let it stand around for half an hour without anything to eat because it, it needs to put saliva and food back down in its stomach to, to bring the pH of the stomach back up and wash that top part of the stomach off with um, saliva. And again, loosen hay is your best thing to feed right after your work. Um, feed lots of forage. So three benefits. It makes horses chew and salivate a lot, uh, which is going to buffer the stomach and it won't be nearly as acidic in there. Um, forage provides the best physical barrier in the stomach to stop the acid from splashing around. I was um, not long ago in, in France for a conference, a horse nutrition conference, and the, the researchers in, at Dijon at the university there had done this cool study where they fed hay and they fed grain and then they stuck a scope down into the horse's stomach to have a look and see what it did. And, and when they fed grain with some fibre in it, it actually formed this funny little ball in the stomach. Um, it just kind of bounced around in there. So it wasn't really very effective for stopping acid from splashing around because it, it wasn't, it didn't fill the stomach up. It was just kind of this ball that was bumping around in the stomach. Um, and forage stays in the stomach for longer and keeps them full for longer. It doesn't move through quite as quickly. Um, horses who are repeat offenders with ulcers reduce the grain content of their diet and in serious cases go grain free. So go for the easy sport if you've got a horse that just keeps getting ulcers. I know <laughs> um, some horses do, just no matter what you do, um, they get ulcers. So I would never put those horses on grain. Um, provide as much turnout time as possible, minimise time, periods of time off feed. Um, so don't leave them for long periods of time without feed. Um, use slow feeders. So if you've got horses in stables, um, try and use hay nets and, and things like that, but slow down consumption time and make them eat for a much longer period of time. Yep. No, it's actually the grain. So the, there's ba a lot of bacteria in the stomach and they actually ferment the grain and produce VFAs. And then the VFAs actually make the stomach more prone to ulceration. Um, so if you've got a horse that is really prone to ulcers, then the grain can actually exacerbate um, how easily the acid will damage their stomach. Yeah. Feeding loosen, though, this is where we're putting some loosen chaff with the grain. They've, they've found... Um, in one nice study that's published, they found that if you feed loosen with grain, it actually negates that effect. Um, so it's it's good to have some loosen in. That's why I often like putting loosen chaff in with grain-based feeds to reduce the impact. Most horses handle grain fine and it doesn't cause an issue in their stomach. But if you do have a horse that just over and over again is getting ulcers, it's worth considering just dropping the grain content right back in their feed um, and using either grain-free. It's hard to go grain-free, though, with the venters because they need the glycogen um, to do the work that they need to do. Um, provide constant access to water. It's a bit of a no-brainer. All, all horses should have that. Um, there's, a, there's a few supplements around that um, stick to the, the wall of the stomach. Um, and I, if you'd asked me about three months ago whether these things actually did um, anything, I'd go, mm, I don't really know. Um, but I, I, um, I do a fair bit of work for Collado as well, and we were looking at their gastroaid product, which has pectin in it. And I was reading about pectins and saying to them, I don't know if we've got the right pectin in this product, because there's all these different, um, I can't remember what the terminology is, but there's, there's different pectins that you can buy, and they use them in, mainly in the food um, industry to set jams and things like that. Um, but it, we ended up getting a whole heap of different pectins and I just messed around with them and made like a, um, had some hydrochloric acid and a bit of calcium and different bits and pieces to, to simulate um, what was going on in the stomach and, and saw how sticky these things were. And my goodness, the, pe the pectins that were good, you'd get them on your fingers and I could wash these things for almost a minute under running water, rubbing my fingers together and they were still slippery and slimy. So chances are that it probably does stick to the horse's stomach pretty well um, and provide some sort of protection from acid splashing around there. No. No. Oh, no. No. So it affects the enzyme's ability 
In the stomach or in the small intestine? In the stomach where you're starting your digestion. Um, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Possibly. Um, and I know when you when you feed psyllium, um, they've done a study where they fed psyllium and then they had a look at the glucose response to grain and it actually dropped the glucose response. And the only explanation I've got for that is that the enzymes just couldn't physically get to the starch in the feed because the psyllium is so gooey and gluggy and that um, stuff couldn't move around. And in chickens, um, in poultry nutrition, they're very aware of what they call um, the non-starch polysaccharides because they are sticky and gooey in the stomach and they do stop the enzymes from moving around. So they possibly do, but you're in this catch-22 of, you know, <laughs> you're trying to manage ulcers and then you're trying to optimise digestion as well. So it's, it's one of those tricky ones. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's, that's really useful to keep up your sleeve too is strategic administration of omeprazole during high-risk periods. So if you're taking horses from Melbourne to Sydney or from Sydney to Melbourne and you're doing that, you know, a couple of times in quick succession, um, chances are your horse is going to end up with ulcers because it's off feed for a long period of time. And when they're traveling, they're actually moving and tensing up quite a bit. So if their stomach empties, they're probably going to be squashing a fair bit of acid up onto the top part of their stomach. Um, so easiest way to manage that is put them on a meprazole a few days before you travel, kill the acid production for a while um, so that they just don't have acid in there to cause ulcers with, let them travel and then take them back off it. But don't leave them on a meprazole all the time because the, the acid's there for a reason and does stuff. Like it dissociates minerals and it, it um, changes protein structure so that protein can be digested a little more efficiently and things like that. I read something else the other day and I went, oh, that's important too. I can't remember what it was. But it, it, it's there for a reason. So you don't want to have them on it all the time. Um, but you can use it strategically so that if you're travelling horses long distances quite frequently, um, then um, it's probably a good idea to have them on emeprazole. Um, 